my. I'm gonna start all over. Talking in the camera is tough. Okay, I got this. I got this. All right, I wanted to do our next, our third five minute Friday, and man, I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be pretty quick. I started thinking of this a couple days ago and started thinking, hey, I'll just put together the essentials, my most needed items on the boat, the things maybe some people wouldn't think about. Now yeah, that'll be easy. Maybe, just maybe I'll keep it to five minutes because the last two did not even come close. I started pulling everything out and I started um, thinking I was kind of like Steve Martin in The Jerk where he's gone broke and he starts saying, well, I don't need any of this stuff. I don't need this stuff! Except for this ashtray. I don't need anything except this. This ashtray, and that's the only thing I need is this. And this paddle game. This paddle game. The ashtray and the paddle game, and that's all I need. And the remote. And the matches. And this lamp, and this chair, and the table. And this. Remote control. The ashtray and the paddle game, and the remote control, and that's all I need. These matches. This lamp. I don't need one other thing. That, and that's what happened today is I started pulling out all the essentials like damn that's a lot of shit my aim is not to share everything that I use on the boat or everything that's important on the boat that would be impossible and it would be more like a 50 minute Friday so I just want to show you the the basic essentials the best of cleaning the best glues you know things maybe some people haven't thought about and then I guess my basic tool setup so let's get into it so before we go too far, I'll let you know that I'm going to put the list of everything I have here in the description below so that you don't have to sit there with a pen and pad and write down everything that I use. So for tools, I store them in a Milwaukee waterproof double case. It seems to keep the tools relatively dry and, uh, you know, very, very organized. For my big tools, I use DeWalt cordless. And the reason, the main reason behind that is not only that they're great tools, but because they make a car charger. So this guy charges directly from my 12 volt batteries. There's no need to use the inverter like a lot of the other tool manufacturers. We'd have to plug it into a socket and use our inverter. Anytime you don't have to convert the energy, uh, it's more efficient. So that's the most efficient way for us to charge them. I have a drill, angle grinder, sawzall, reciprocating little saw. Brrr, I don't really know what it's called. Brrr, a jigsaw. Lastly, the orbital sander, all of which have come in very handy and fit into the case quite nicely. All right, when it comes to cleaning and polishing, there are a lot of products out there that are good, but our favorite, and we're not sponsored by any of these companies, it's just legitimately what we have learned is the best or we prefer. For polishing, colonite right here, insulator wax. It sounds weird, but all it is is it's a wax, it's a protectant. They have a metal specific one. It does a little bit of cleaning and a lot of protecting. So these are our two favorite for protecting. If there's any sort of buildup, a marine polish, and there's, we have an assortment of heavy and, and light duty. These are a dime for a dozen, really. It doesn't matter what you use. All of the polishes seem to work pretty well, and we keep a medium and a heavy duty on board. The heavy duty would be for like the rust or really heavy oxidation, and the medium would be more for gel coat that has a little bit of oxidation. If the rust is really bad, we go to this product. I sourced this in Mexico, it's the only place I've ever seen it, but all of this is in English, so I have a feeling that this is also available in the US. This is actually made for cleaning ductwork, the interior of ductwork, because it's got oxalic acid, which does an incredible job on metal, and it really attacks rust. So this has been our one of our favorite cleaners for sure. Watch your skin on that one for sure too. So that's if it's red or rusty. If it's black, Starbright makes a black streak remover that's amazing for anything black. And if it's mold or mildew, boom, mold mildew stain remover. That's good for fabric. Got to have a, a hose on board and we love, this is easy to pack up. It's not like the old garden hoses that we're all used to. This is the expandable kink free. And I actually have it uh, hooked up to an onboard water pump that draws salt water out. Still salt water, but it's better than nothing. Plus it's fun. 
Also an aluminum, man, these things are just incredible. I love these microfiber towels and then it has a different head for it for scrubbing the deck. Use this all the time, kind of addicted to it. Another thing for metal, if it's small spots, this star clean, this is amazing stuff for cleaning off small spots of rust if it's really heavy. If you don't want metal to rust, there's not a lot of stuff we allow on the boat or we would purchase if it was steel, but there's some things that you just can't help. If it's not stainless steel, it has to be sprayed. It's gonna rust like crazy. So we use this heavy duty corrosion inhibitor made by CRC. This is something you can get on Amazon. I know that for sure. And this has been great. We'll spray it on everything. Everything from battery terminals to, uh, you know, if it's spring steel, something that's got a spring because those are not stainless steel. This is important, okay? Next up, liquid wrench, penetrating oil, in case you need to break free a nut, that's important. I have three of my favorite lubes here. DuPont Multi-Use Performance Lubricator. This one is fantastic and you can use it on just about everything. This is a wet, but it has Teflon in it. Wet meaning like it's an oil kind of, okay? So it kind of sticks around. If you need it to be dry, for instance, on the Travelers, on the mast for the sail. Non-stick dry film lubricant, also made by DuPont. Pretty amazing stuff, I really like that. You can use it heavy, it kind of dries and it leaves a film behind instead of a grease, okay? Normally I would never use WD-40, I've never liked it. Um, it's more like a cleaner, it's, a, it's kind of a thin and it evaporates quite quickly and it's not much, in my opinion, it's not great as a lubricant, okay? But this one is a water resistant silicone and this one has actually worked pretty well. I use this on a lot of squeaks. I just want you to do these dishes properly, why do you just always use this one? Can you use this one? The soap, um, and anywhere that might have uh, get sprayed with with salt water. That's what I would use there couple last things This is the best glue that I have used. Okay, everybody likes um, God, what's the name of it? What is that glue I, I I won't even remember it. What is it called? 5280 what is that called? What's that marine glue? Ah either way it doesn't light a candle compared to this stuff, okay? This is the Loctite PL Marine, and I get this on Amazon, but I know it, you can get it in a lot of other places, but this is the best glue that I have found on a boat. Something else that's really nice to have is it's called dielectric grease. If you haven't heard of this, it's a grease that does not conduct electricity, meaning that you can put it on finer electrical things, like for instance, your cell phone charger, maybe. Um, this will protect all of those spots. So we put this on everything that's, you know, a headphone jack even. These things will rust, so, this, it gets a small layer of this on there. For another glue product, this has been really great. JB Weld, you guys have probably all heard of that. They make a water weld, which is really great. Um, this can be put, applied underwater and will cure underwater. So that's quite nice to have on the boat. And I guess the last thing that I could wrap up with that maybe you guys have not heard of, I would be surprised if you had, is these plastic sheets. This is called Kydex. This is something that uh, is used a lot commercially. Actually, you probably have a lot of this stuff in your home or your car. They'll heat this up and vacuum form different uh, products. A lot of dashes are made out of this. You can source this stuff online and I use it for all sorts of things around the boat. Anytime I need to form something, I actually will use, I almost forgot about this little guy. These things are super great. You can uh, finish the end of a line or a rope with this. Just a little, oh yeah, little, little micro torch. So most of the stuff I need to make with this is little and I can heat it up with this torch and then form it into whatever shape I need. Or if it's bigger, I have an industrial heat gun that I just can zap it with. But there again, it uses a lot of power, so I try not to use that. Hot. All right, so that's it. I hope you liked it. I know it was quick. I just wanted to try and get it done in five minutes. But if you have any other questions or comments, please s send it to us on YouTube. I talk like an idiot. I don't know why I do this. Oh. All right, well, that's it. I don't even know how long it's been. I kind of blacked out there for a second. I don't know. <laughs> when I look into the camera, I kind of just lose all sense of time. But you guys, thank you for joining us. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. And as always, thanks a ton for watching. I hope you uh, learned something and this was helpful. Mm.